I'd like to welcome everybody again to um, the May 15th meeting of uh, the town and emergency management. And uh, so right now we have myself, uh, Roland, uh, Michael from Green Mountain Access, Karen, Matthew, Ron, Paul, and Amy. And since we don't have Brad, um, we can't do a, a state EOC update. Uh, neither Ron nor I got an invitation this week. Uh, so, um, Ron, if you want to update us on on town changes. Yeah, sure. I can give you a couple little things. That actually, things are sort of calming down a little bit. The select board's order to reopen town facilities comes with all the safety precautions that everybody's been familiar with, including the uh, uh, testing of employees when they show up, which we're starting to do, and a uh, uh, the training is done. The governor's order has been extended to June 15th, so the stay home uh, telecommuting goals for municipals and state government are still in place which a lot of people are doing. Uh, most of uh, the next steps are dealing with the retail and stores, things like that. So I think as far as municipals go, we're probably gonna be stuck in this mode for another month, I would think. Uh, but we'll continue to listen and see if there's any changes to that. Uh, we haven't had any difficulties per se. I mean, the highway projects are moving forward. They're being designed. Engineering is going on. We're doing, we did soil borings on Main Street for a stormwater project. So things are, things are moving. I, don't, I, I can't think of too many things that aren't in some state of restarting or almost back to normal, uh, even if they're under different protocols and cleaning and masks and separation. So um, it would be interesting to see if just generally if people start to complain about something, if there's some, you know, service that's not being provided or whatever, but I really haven't heard that piece. I think people are being patient and following the governor's orders, as far as I can tell. Um, I, I don't think the select board or town government operations will change dramatically. We're try trying to deal for green up day which will be on May 30th. So that's one of those things where you're gonna have small groups of people and staying six feet apart and coming and dropping bags on the side of the road like normal. Uh, it was delayed by the 30 days or so. Uh, the Guyon Valley Hall Committee people are trying to do a public meeting and, th and that's a little odd because usually you have food and invite a whole bunch of people together. So they're trying to figure out how to have a public meeting on a project up in North Hyde Park, but they struggling to figure out how to reach everybody. So anyway, those are the challenges for the long term. I think I don't I, like I said, I don't think we're going to be seeing many more changes other than trying to deal with that new new way of operating. So that's all I got. OK, thanks, Ron. Um, have you heard anything about the uh, the food bank uh, distribution at the airport on the 22nd um, or this the uh, the testing? No, no, the, the pop-up testing that's around. No, I've, I've seen the listing for the statewide sites where you can call ahead and get scheduled, but I haven't heard anything more about the food distribution, no. Okay, it, it's interesting that it didn't have, uh, there weren't, didn't seem to be income restrictions or any of that on, on it. And I kind of thought that was a little odd. Were they just assuming um, that uh, people will do it? Um, yeah, that's they, what they did. In Rut yeah, they did that in Rutland uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago, where they just had the. I think the National Guard was helping distribute MREs and other supplies to anybody that drove up, and everybody got a car full and they left. So I think it's more like get it out because there is a need, but they didn't want to make it so cumbersome to slow it down. So I think that's yeah. probably. The how they're going to process them all around the state. Yeah, that's good that, that that's coming up our way. Um, Susan's not here. Roland, do you have anything from the select board? 
No, nope, the only thing that I've got is everybody I've talked to met down to the post office and people that I've met around to thank to the select board and thanked everybody for doing what they could do and they thought it was pretty nice and that's about about all I got. No complaints. It's all been good positive stuff. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, and, Carol Carol yeah. Susan Susan just texted that she has a conflict with another phone conference meeting. Um, so she won't be able to attend today. She s thought that we could almost move to every other week with these phone calls and otherwise things are pretty quiet and stable. So that was her message on the text. Okay. Um, well, we might as well go around. Um, the, uh, the masks um, have been going well. We have a, quite a supply now and uh, um, has a mailing been done, Ron? I uh, finished up the mailing today. I had to, we were trying to add a couple little tidbits there. Since it's a townwide mailing, we kind of took advantage of adding some other notices to it. So that will be going to the printer today and then picked up uh, probably, hopefully Tuesday and then sent through the every door direct method, which is every post office box and every mailbox will get one card. Uh, one side will talk about the mask program and give out contact information for that. It's basically the same notice that was on Front Porch Forum, but we know some people don't, you know, they're not connected to the computer. So this will be the mailing that gets in everybody's hands. Um, and then a reminder that Green Up Day is on May 30th and to uh, contact the light, you know, check out the library website for some notices that they have there. So it's sort of, it's a, it's more than the mask program, but it's still just, good information for people to have in their mailbox for people that aren't connected electronically. Oh, great. Hopefully that will uh, reach everybody and we can uh, we can take some more of these masks out and deliver them. Um, Amy, uh, what do you have for us? Well, the library started curbside today, which just means that um, people can either call us to reserve books or um, do that with their accounts in our online catalog. Um, and the online reserves were quite busy and we've set up a system that we're just doing starting today, Wednesdays and Fridays. People can get in touch with us between 11 and one um, to reserve their books online anytime. And, um, and then they can pick up their materials between one and three. Um, the way that we've set it up is that the orders are bagged up with a tag on them so people can identify which bag is theirs and they're put on a cart that we wheel just outside the door on Church Street. And um, if it's rainy, then we have to sort of monitor that a little differently because we don't have a covered area. So the idea was if it's rainy, people kind of have to knock and we'll hand them their bags of books through the door. Luckily today, the rain it actually started raining just about three o'clock. So I wheeled the cart in and uh, there were still a couple of orders on the on the cart that hadn't been picked up, but but that they can pick up on Wednesday. So our timing was really good with the weather today, keeping the materials dry and um, returning same types of thing. We're only accepting materials returning between one and three on Wednesdays and Fridays. And we're doing that so that we can sort of control knowing when those materials have come back into the building we're quarantining them for at least a week. And because of the way our work schedule is going, it'll probably be a little bit longer than that. Still no official guidelines about library materials and how long the virus stays on them. The, the sort of old advice is 24 hours on paper and 72 on plastic. So right now we're feeling pretty good about um, a week or a little bit longer than that for the returns. Uh, we have some gloves and we have homemade masks that we're wearing when we handle materials that are coming into the building and um, after the quarantine period they're kind of in a they come into a box inside the building so we don't really have to handle that um, people seem pretty happy that we're still you know that we're starting up again and um, we weren't quite as busy today as I, I expected but we were busy I think Christy is going to get it on Wednesday, a lot more people. Um, 
as far as the greater library programming goes, we did have a trustee meeting. We bought a Zoom subscription. So our trustee meeting was uh, a Zoom meeting and um, on Tuesday. And we're just taking baby steps, as I've been saying right along. Curbside, two days a week is our first baby step. Um, my time as president of the Vermont Library Association will be over on June 5th. So I had my last board meeting um, yesterday with the Vermont Library Association. Lots of conversations about how libraries could potentially reopen, but um, there's so many details involved because we operate in a very different way than any other kind of organization. You know, for years I've been writing in the town report and talking about how we're a third space, right? Like home is one, work is two, and then the library is that third place that you go to to get information, to run into your neighbors, to hang out, to talk, to use the free internet. And that's just not the way that this is going to be working for a while. So libraries around the world really are getting creative with how that the services are going. A lot of people are doing virtual programming and we will probably do some adult uh, virtual programming, but um, hoping to do more sort of outside independent things for kids. So I've been hearing from a lot of parents particularly of the kids who are in school and doing a lot of their online work, that there's so much screen time right now. So we're hoping to be able to do story walks throughout the village ongoing all summer, all season long, really, as long as the weather's nice and people can walk around. Um, doing some scavenger hunt type things, so outdoor independent, but not necessarily having to be in front of a computer screen all the time. And um, I think that's about it. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been working so hard for the past couple of months. It's really heartening, really heartening um, to have so much municipal support. And like I said, I talk to librarians around the state pretty much every day. And um, it's not the case everywhere. Hyde Park is special. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Well, thank you, Amy, and thank you for everything that you are doing. Um, Karen, uh, how are things with Hyde Park Helpers? Hi. Um, Hyde Park Helpers has really slowed down um, because uh, I think people are um, creeping out of their homes and giving it a shot on their own. Um, we had uh, uh, only three full shopping trips total so far in May. So we had a very, very light week this week. Um, there were three little shopping trips as well that were just like a few things. And, you know, we've been helping people out with that as well. But, um, and we, we have heard, you know, one person even reported back, like I did it, I went out, I did this. So, um, which, which I guess is good. And, but we're going to do um, a little bit of uh, shout outs uh, in terms of thank yous to the volunteers that have been helping. Um, but also ask that they, you know, kind of stay with the group because, you know, we don't know what's going to come and, you know, that, that people may change their mind and, and not feel that comfortable. So um, we, we don't want to be, you know, we're not closing up shop at all. Um, we do want to talk about that airport delivery um, as to whether or not that would be something that some of the helpers would be willing to do for people that can't get to it. Um, because, um, you know, there's people certainly that can't, we've helped people that uh, we've helped steer people to the food shelf who have been doing deliveries um, because we're not really doing um, work in terms of helping people that don't have enough money because <clears throat> shopping don't have the money. But we want to talk about that airport, the airport drop off as a possible um, day. Uh, but I did hear today that Barry was very, um, very, very busy and a lot, a lot of long waits. So we're going to talk about it this week and uh, see if there's some uh, some volunteers that want to try to help with that. So we'll see. And um, like Amy, I've just been so appreciative of everything that the town's done. Um, we got our own masks this week. They came immediately and. Um, I've been just talking it up to everybody that you know this is something that's available. It's amazing how many masks you really need to have because of the whole keeping them clean thing. So thank you. 
Well, great. Thanks, Karen. And um, I did look at, uh, I think it was at the Food Bank's actual website regarding the distribution, and they did say that you could pick up for five families. So that might yeah. help you yeah, a little bit heard... and restrict you a bit as well. Yeah, but if we, even if we had, I mean, depending on how many, you know, we'd see how many need it in High Park. And uh, if four people went, that would be a lot. So, um, right, right. So yeah. we'll, we'll talk it through this week. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Paul, what do you have for us this week? Well, good afternoon on this rainy day. This is a spring rain, though. I have to I think positive about all this. <laughs> the plant's going to grow. The garden's going to do well. Kay was out today planting some more lilies as she had. Uh, came in the other day, so the garden, the flower gardens, will at least survive themselves. Um, one of the big concerns we have here at the park is is uh, dancing to a different tune here uh, as we progress. You know, from it seems like about every two weeks, we've got an opportunity to to uh, exercise a, a little more uh, uh, outgoing experience rather than just sitting around the house. Um, I'm noticing it in the park that people. We're getting, starting to get out more until this cooler weather came, and they, they ducked back inside. And uh, now the rain's here. What um, what concerns me um, is uh, opening up too much. Where uh, I was talking with Ken Harvey, uh, the owner, the other day, yesterday, and uh, uh, about opening up the clubhouse for um, individual activities, whether it be just. Uh, We've got exercise equipment in there for that the park owns, and we uh, people previous to the corona, of course, were using it on a daily basis. So it's treadmill and a step mill and some other things we had there, and, and we have got uh, a, a bit of a library in there. Uh, that of course that and nobody's been going in. Uh, the only books that I've seen on uh, are those covered being returned. So we need to we need to be able to get in there and and access uh, some of the things. We even got a little puzzle tables that a couple of people like to go in there and work on that during the day. So we'd like to open it up not not for dinners but for individual activities, uh, one two three people at a time, appropriately attired and uh, spaced. You know, um, they've been doing that. Most of the time, when they go into the mail room to, to get their mail, we've got a sign there that says one at a time. Most of the time that works. Um, mask up. Uh, so now we're trying to, we're, we'll try to assemble the, the latest uh, keep your distance, stay masked, and uh, stay home. It's uh, uh, The governor wants us to stay smart as well. Um, and uh, when we exercise our ventures outside of our immediate residence. So I'm thinking of doing that, um, sitting down with our board and uh, saying, oh, Ken and I agree that we, we can do these things and open up a little more. We'll probably keep it closed for all the other activities where outside people are coming in, whether it's bone builders or the quilt folks. That gets uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 people at a clip in there at a time. So we're not really interested in doing that, of course. We've um, We've not uh, positioned ourselves to have our annual meeting, which falls in, in um, the middle of June this year, um, where um, we scheduled it for later later this late summer, um, thinking that the corona would be by us when we made the decision. <laughs> and now it's, there's a distinct possibility it could bounce back by fall, but we'll see. The plan that I'm I'm fiddling with in my head is to open up our and just have a regular uh, um, not a meeting but a uh, a voting privilege where we'll just open up the clubhouse if we're still in a semi quarantine state to um, to just open it up with a couple of people in there to monitor what's happening and just have like a voting for um, a ballot box there and yeah, fill in the spaces and approve the budget and or not <laughs> vote for officers or not. 
that's the way I'm looking at it currently is to run, have a meeting meeting, just do it in such a fashion as that until this, until we can all sit down at the same time. But clearly we we're not probably going to, the way I see things, we're not going to be able to, I don't, I don't see getting 50 people all together in a room or a hundred. I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. So that being said, um, I will say that I did uh, take the opportunity to, to go online and sign up for a testing at in Morrisville on the 22nd. Uh, that was a good experience to, to, you know, I always leery about going in on these websites and saying, okay, <laughs> what hassle am I going to have here today? But it worked out well. And it was uh, when I signed off within a minute, I had a uh, response back, uh, a reserve spot and the time was all confirmed on back to me on an email. Uh, I was impressed. Um, there's no money attached to it, of course, so <laughs> they let me know right away. Um, I'll be I'm interested to see how it's all going to work when I arrive there, of course. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a learning experience so I can share, but I, I would encourage anybody that hasn't signed up to do so. Um, it's a good opportunity if you haven't had the corona to just find out what you might have or just to know how the system all works um, as well. And then to get uh, to get on the page for uh, asymptomatic or however it is for you. Um, so we're um, concerned, of course, that if there's any f further need for masking, that you let us know. A couple of ladies here in the park had indicated to me that if there was a a, a need for further uh, masks to be uh, to be made, that they would be uh, certainly uh, would contribute once again. So as you, uh, after your mailing goes out, if there seems to be a, a heavy need here, uh, the ladies uh, that did the sewing said that they would, they would do some more. So with that, I guess I'll close. I think that's all I've got for now. Thank you. Well, thank you, Paul. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll certainly let you know if we need more masks. And I, I do assume that um, we should get an uptick uh, after the mailing is received by folks. Uh, hopefully not too many, um, although the more, I guess, the, the better. Um, Matthew, uh, do you have anything for us this week? Matt, um, your microphone is... Uh, Muted there we go. I got it. So, uh, no, I have nothing to add. I just wanted to hear what was going on with the town offices. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, I will add uh, that uh, while we were having the meeting, I received an email um, from Val Valcor um, with some updated statistics. And uh, one of the charts uh, lists um, the COVID 19 rates by county. And although our total for the last couple of days was 27 cases. Uh, it currently says zero. So um, the wording's a little difficult, but I'm making the assumption there that we had a total of 27 cases and now we have no current cases. Um, so that's, that's positive. And uh, the lion's share of course is Chittenden County with 26 and Franklin with 10, and then everybody else is um, well below that. Um, Orleans has zero, <clears throat> and Washington has three. So uh, that's looking pretty positive. Um, does anybody else, else have anything to add uh, before we end the meeting? I had an update on, I think Matt was asking specifically about um, town office, structure and the what the town clerk is doing and what she's set up is uh the two-person max for staff is still in play so i'm i'll stay uh, working from home allison is pretty much always from home kim and kristen are manning or stationing the two um the only people in there along with the village staff so they alternate days as far as i know so kim and Kristen do have 
options to work from home to have one person there uh, I think every day for a few hours and they're scheduling people by request I don't I, you have to talk to Kim directly about anything else um, showing up with a mask or gloves or um, you know preferred times and all that stuff I think she just works with people by request uh, that can't get serviced otherwise so I think that's going to stay in place for a while the the most recent orders and addendums from the governor haven't really changed that. And that system has been in place for a couple of weeks. Okay, great. And uh, as you heard, uh, Susan brought up uh, meeting every other week uh, rather than every week. Um, we'll probably take that discussion offline and um, I'll let you know with the meeting notice how we're going to handle that. Um, so, if there's no one else with any comments, um, we will close the meeting for today. Last chance. Thank you, Carol, for everything. Yeah, thanks very much. This has been great. I look forward to meeting in two weeks. Well, thank you everyone for attending today and uh, look forward to hearing from you either next week or the week after. Have yep, a thank great you, Carol. weekend.